Chris Jenson, welcome, EXP Chats. Great to have you here. Lee, thanks for having us, mate. My absolute pleasure. Now you've got a bit of a story, Chris, and uh, certainly a, very much an inspiration for me, always on the phones to you, getting ideas, <laughs> talking to you. One of the original crew for the XP Australia, is that right? Yeah, mate. Yeah, I think I was number 13 or 14 for Australia, um, third icon agent for Australia. So, yeah, I was one of the early adapters, mate, that sort of went against the grain. but could see the shift, the change within the industry was coming. It was inevitable. So yeah. I like to be, I guess, you know, I, I like to be in front of innovation, not chasing it. Yeah, yeah, good advice. So you're from the Adelaide market, right? Been down there for yep. some time. How long have you been in real estate for? 15 years now, mate. 15 years. And so just give us a little bit of a short glimpse as to what that looked like the 15 years for you, because I know you did own your office, but before that, was you working for another company? Yeah, I left a, cor a, a good corporate role with Telstra. Dropped a sixty thousand dollar wage. Started in the industry as a trainee. Was meant to complete my traineeship within two years. Just was listing and selling too much. Wrote uh, just over two fifty k GCI in my second third year of real estate, um, and then eventually completed my trainee because my principal at the time said you either complete your traineeship and take two weeks leave to complete it because you had to do it in classroom, not online, right. or yeah. you've got no job. So I had to take annual leave. So. Um, always pushing the boundaries, mate. Um, so he started off as a trainee, uh, then became part of an effective business unit, worked really closely with the likes of Lee Woodward to create one of the first, I guess, well, we were the first effective business unit in South Australia back then, a listing agent, buyer's agent, and a support person. Yeah. Um, we got to a certain level, branched off, went our own direction, continued to list and sell, and then eventually became a franchise uh, business owner for four, four and a bit years. And uh, here we are, EXP today. Yeah, okay. So tell us that transition from business ownership to EXP. Um, was that a conscious decision that you saw EXP and thought, you know what, I'm getting out of this business? Or were you already sort of looking for an exit strategy? Um, look, our franchise agreement was up. So it was a great opportunity for me to have a few conversations, tough conversations with my business partner at the time. He was probably seeing more value in it than what I was. Yeah. Um, I sort of started to immerse myself in online cloud-based models, particularly this was right on the cusp when COVID first hit actually. Yeah. And I was home more, I was being a better father, a better husband, and I was writing, the, I was producing the same sort of volume in numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, I was home more. And I thought there's something in this. Um, so I sort of started to immerse myself in it. The franchise at the time said it's a five-year deal. That's it. We're not going to move on it. Our people at the time who we consulted before signing the agreement said, probably signed for two years. That's where they saw value our people. So, but there was no deal. We couldn't move on that with flexibility. Mm. And mate, I'm, I'm more of a lifestyle agent. I found being a, a former business owner in the environment I was, the business was heavily reliant on me. I was sort of doing everything at 25% capacity because I was wearing so many hats. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to go away and do some fishing or exploring, it was really difficult for me. Yeah. So I just run, wanted to run a good quality of business but I just wanted to do it my way from a sales and transaction point of view. But I've also got my property management rent roll business that's completely separate from EXP, no partnerships, and I own it 100% myself. Um, so so the transition, I thought it would be harder than what it was in reality, mate, but it, often it's what's between your two ears than what you know the, the reality yeah. and outcome really is as to how difficult a change really often isn't. Yeah, Always the way, isn't it? And I remember the same sort of feeling when I decided to make the, the shifts, but I just couldn't I couldn't unsee what I saw. And um, yep. the more I looked into it and the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. And um, look, just just bit the bullet, uh, had the, the courage, leap of faith, and um, never looked back. You know, it was um, the best move I've ever made, definitely. And the transition was simple. Um, but I came from a contracting agent into basically doing what I was doing, just without that yep. brand um, instead with EXP. Yeah. Whereas you've come from a, a whole, you know, business basically, which I assume yep. must change the dynamics of your life dramatically. Like you said, you're about the lifestyle and family and fishing and and doing all that great stuff. Yeah, mate. Uh, look, it was um, <clears throat> it was a testing time, a tested relationships. You soon find out who who your true inner circle is when you go through changes like that. But mm. you know, the the change for me, I just wanted to run a business that was really robust. It was nimble. It wasn't didn't have all these absorbent overheads so that if I wanted to do 
like what I'm doing now. I'm traveling Australia, taking gap year with my family. I can still keep my business ticking back home for the opportunities that come through. Whereas previously I felt very much like a tree with a big root and I was stuck in one location and to get away and explore and do the things that we love was incredibly difficult. Yeah. Um, so EXP just provided me the perfect platform, mate, to um, keep my, my overheads at an affordable cost because we had a big business, but perception from the outside of what's big to what's on the inside and what's left over at the end of the month can be completely different yes. from the perception yep. to what the reality is. had many is. conversations like that, yeah. Yeah. So the EXP overheads model of 220 a month certainly yeah. outweighs well, what you were previously done. Recession proof your business, mate. I could keep traveling for years and still keep my business open back home. I mean, I, I have extra plugins to my business, but at the moment it's costing me under a thousand dollars a month to service my business whilst traveling full time. Um, and that includes running a few additional prospecting systems that are bolted into my business and the XP subscription. Um, I, I run a farm BDA area, so that that still entails that being letterbox drop regularly with a community report every month. So there's a few little add-ons I've chucked on. That's really the flexibility, I guess, with EXPs. You can have 220 to operate as a listing and transacting agent and be done with, or if you want to add extra stuff on, you can. Whereas before, I used to have a lot of guys and girls that would come to me with some incredible innovation ideas and concepts that they wanted to add into their business. But because we were the business owners, we paid the bill. Often they were fronted with the decision of no, we're not going to have that because, you know, our revenue and our, 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 our paying to profit line is margins quite small. You know, yeah. there's very little room for movement at the moment. Uh, so there was a lot of no, whereas now with EXP, it's like, well, it's your business. You've got 220 to operate as a minimum. But if you want to chuck on active pipe, Rita, run a farm, BDA area, bolt on as little or as much as you like. It's your call. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're a brick and mortar, brick and mortar business going to EXP cloud-based business model. Yeah, yeah, working from yeah. home, mate. Home office. Nice. And yeah. now traveling Australia for a year gap year. You're the licensee of South Australia. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's still a lot going on. It's not like you're just sitting there fishing every day and you're jumping on chats no. like this with me. So you're still very much involved, but you can do it at your own pace and, and still have that balance of lifestyle um, and work sort of integrated, which is really the way going forward, isn't it? To have our have something that we're passionate about, earning us an income, but also still enjoying living, which I think you yeah, do mate, very well. We do what, well, we do what we do so that we can provide the lifestyle that we want at the yeah. end of the day. And um, yes, yeah, so I started off as an agent with EXP and about 12 months in, uh, they wanted a state licensee because we we're, were experiencing some solid growth from a compliance and growth point of view. So I took on that role. Uh, it's just so true how entrepreneurial the American spirit is. When they approach me, the big heads from the United States, I said, well, look, I'm happy to take on the role. I'm honored that you've approached me, but just know that for 12 months period, I'm going to be out of the state because we want to travel. That was always part of our plan, getting out of uh, the former business life that we're in. And they were like, we don't care where you are. Like we're a cloud-based online business. So as long as the KPIs of compliance and growth are met, that's all that we can ask for. Mm. And if anything, it's provided a great opportunity for me to be more hands-on with our agents because I'm not just constantly listing and selling like a lot of busy principals are that are, you know, pretty much keeping the business, I guess, you know, lifted up to some degree. But now I can be full-time dedicated resource and support for our guys and girls um, on the ground. But, mate, looking forward to getting back because one of the things I said to EXP when I took on the licensee role is that I will always continue to list and sell. I will always continue to be a general on the ground with my troops because I think to be a licensee, you need to be working with them to understand what they need, what the opportunities are, what we need to do better. So whilst I'm not listing and selling now, focusing 100% on the licensee role, I am looking forward to getting back and being in the trenches with the troops on the front line and working with them on weekends. Like I love game day, Saturday. I used to just mm. bounce from different guys and girls opens to give them support or at their auction campaigns. I'm not shy, mate. If an agent needs help, I'm happy to get on that front door for you and say, give me the home pass. I'll check everyone in. This is your listing. It's important you be there for the buyers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very um, open door policy. Yeah, yeah, just a hands-on yeah. licensee, mate. And I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't continue on the licensee role if I couldn't do that part of being active As with well. them in the yeah. marketplace. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I'd feel the same. I think, I mean, the, the passion for me is realistically, 
listing and selling properties. Um, yep. But you've built up a team now. You've got a, probably the strongest team in Australia, I would, I would imagine. Um, and Australians sitting around, what, at the time we're recording this, 130 agents. Does that sound about right? Yep. We we'll have to say over that now. Yep. So we're, we're growing. It's it's not the fastest rate of growth, but it's good rate of growth. And I assume the guys in the US are fairly happy with what's going on. Uh, and yep. that, that rate of growth will will accelerate very quickly, I imagine, too. Um, once more people get familiar with the XP business model. Yeah. I mean, we were looking at numbers yesterday because we had a um, a global corporate meeting today. So from when I took over the tenure of licensee South Australia and a few other licensees that were appointed in the other states, um, our agent growth in the last sort of 15 months has increased by just over 40%, but our transactions have gone, have increased 50%, over 50% year on year. So what that's telling us is, the agent growth hasn't come on as thick and fast as some other countries where licensing regulations are completely different to Australia. Yeah. Um, employment laws are completely different. I mean, India, for example, man, anyone can join EXP India. You don't even need to be qualified and have a license or be a licensed real estate agent. There's no employment laws. So here, laws, regulations, legislations are very difficult. We have to say no just as much as we have to say yes to agents that are... Yeah meeting the minimum employment law requirements, unfortunately. But the main thing that that story is telling us is that our growth is over 40% up year on year with agent count, but our transaction volumes is hugely up. So we're mm. bringing on good producing and performing solid agents. They're not all million dollar superstars that some would expect to see with a movement and an industry change uh, model like ours, but these are solid, consisting, performing mums and dads running really good quality of business. Yeah, yeah. And I think you'll see that transition shift too as, as more people become aware. You'll see those million-dollar agents gravitating towards this as well. Um, Chris, yep. before you before you joined EXP, what were maybe one of the, the top two or three things that really attracted you to the model? And then if you can look yep. back at it and go, what were the actual three things now that you'd say be the best things about it? <laughs> well, number one was the commission split. Clearly, yeah. uh, I mean, it was it was better than what I was being paid myself as a business owner. <laughs> so I like the commission split and that fact there was no royalties or franchise fees that came off the top. It was purely a hundred percent of the the sliding scale yeah. of seventy five yeah. to a hundred percent. So the the cap commission component was highly advantageous to me because um, what the requirements is to write a hundred thousand dollars. I was doing that in a quarter, so I worked out my numbers and in mm. my forecast, I worked that I was going to be on a hundred percent for a good part of seven eight months of the year through the exp model so that was highly advantageous um i like the flexibility mate just to run my business myself my way no partnerships work from home be a bit more relaxed not stressed out so it was really that that lifestyle aspect was up there along with the commission splits obviously the commission splits helps provide the lifestyle yeah, and yeah when you're on 100 yeah. for most of the year well yeah. lifestyle will change you know it yes. will influence your lifestyle so that were probably the two biggest things uh, the next part of your questions, now looking back at that time, revenue share, absolutely. Like the revenue share component, I didn't understand. I did a lot of research before joining EXP. There's a lot of content out there that you can find about revenue share, but I wasn't really focused in that part, mate. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I got my first revenue share payment from one of our guys. I remember it was about $437 landed in my account. It was an anonymous credit. Well, I had a description, but I didn't understand the description. So I rang our finance team, Michelle. I said, Michelle, what's this $437 credit? And she goes, that's your rev share payment for Mike. And I was like, right, okay. So when the money's in your bank, it's real. It's like, mate, mm. we've been paid. Like this is happening. So I sort of started to immerse myself in that space a little bit more. I got a lot of stuff wrong in the first probably... 12 to 15 months with growth and revenue share. I feel like we're just starting to hit our straps. We're still at about 70%. There's always room for movement, but the more I've understood the revenue share component, the more beneficial it's come. But the biggest thing, mate, that I've noticed with growing a team is money aside, revenue share aside, how many lives in the last two and a bit years we've actually helped shift and make mm. a real positive change in people's lives. And what it's taught me is it's not always about the EXP offering, the commission split, the revenue, the shares, all that stuff. It's about 
somebody needing help in their life, whether it's a relationship breakdown, the culture and environment that they're in, they're not happy. It could be financial pressure and strain, absolutely. But EXP provides so many different solutions to different life circumstances that people might be going through at that time. Yeah. And the more I've started to understand that of how do we help provide a solution, it's not about the deal and the offering because everyone's throwing deals at agents, right, to get them over. It's about their why their solution to a problem that they might have in their life, their world right now. Yeah. Um, so that's been the biggest learning, mate, for sure. Um, yeah, property man. management would be the other part, component of that question. I really put a big focus on property management because when it's your baby and you own it entirely and you see that little a- asset nest egg growing, it's it's really it's really self-empowering. Yeah, right. you got the property. you got lots going on, Chris. <laughs> lots going on and traveling Australia. All right, it's look, important um, to get... Inspiring it's conversation. To get seven hours sleep a night, mate, for that reason. <laughs> yes, yes. Seven Rest hours is good important. sleep. <laughs> mate, pleasure speaking with you today. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, let's connect again. I appreciate your time, Lee. It's awesome. Love chatting always, mate. Thanks, Chris. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, man. <laughs>